Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea Martin and I am a doctoral student here at Loma Linda University where I study the behavioral ecology of reptiles. Today I'm going to be exploring the fascinating world of rattlesnakes with you and we're going to be learning about their basic biology and some of the local species you can find here in Southern California. Let's get started. Snakes tend to be an animal that a lot of people dislike, but what are snakes? <laughs> snakes belong to their own order, Serpentes, within the class Reptilia, which also includes turtles, tortoises, tuatares, lizards, and crocodiles. The suborder Serpentes is highly diverse, with more than 3,600 species, but all snakes share some fundamental characteristics. Like all reptiles, they possess scales, and they are legless. Some lizards happen to be legless as well, but all lizards have external ears, where snakes never have an external ear opening. Snakes have a large number of vertebrae, anywhere from 120 to 500, depending on the species. By comparison, humans have just 33 vertebrae, which means snakes are highly adapted to having elongated bodies. Due to their elongated shape, their organs are modified to properly fit inside the body. Snakes have a reduced left lung and an elongated right lung. Snakes also possess a unique skull because their jaws are not fused together. This allows them to open their mouths very wide to ingest large prey items. The suborder of snakes is broken up into five major groups, pythons, boas, and colubrids, most of which are non-venomous, and then the elapids and vipers, which are venomous. Now, some colubrid snakes are venomous as well, but none of those occur in North America and none are dangerously venomous. Now, rattlesnakes belong to the family Vipiridae and are a part of the subfamily Crotaline, also known as the pit vipers. Pit vipers get their name from their heat sensing pits, which are located between the eyes and nostrils on both sides of the head. These pits can detect infrared radiation from warm objects and allow them to better see mammalian prey in darkness, such as at night or in a burrow underground. Pit vipers are well known for being venomous and having large triangle-shaped heads which house two glands, one on each side of the head where the venom is stored. Venom is injected into prey using their two movable fangs which are hollow on the inside much like a hypodermic needle. Each fang can move independently of the other and inject different amounts of venom. And when a fang is broken or lost, it can be quickly replaced. Many of us have heard that rattlesnakes are poisonous, but this isn't true. Rattlesnakes aren't poisonous, they're venomous. So what's the difference between a poison and a venom? Well, poison is transferred passively to our skin or internal organs by touching or swallowing, and this can lead to death. Venom, in contrast, is injected into other organisms through a wound and can likewise cause death. Being poisonous is a defense mechanism, often accompanied by a bright warning coloration, sometimes called aposematism. Now, poison dart frogs are an example of this. Their bright colors warn predators that attacking them is not worth their time because they're attacked or eaten, it could cause the predator to get sick and possibly die. Venom is different in that its function can be used for either predation or defense, but is primarily used for foraging by many species, including rattlesnakes. Use of venom is a very effective way to take down prey and is present in over 200,000 species of animals of all kinds in the world. Venom usually contains a cocktail of different toxins that are specifically adapted to effectively immobilize and kill specific prey. These toxins cause a variety of reactions, including paralysis, blood clotting, or internal bleeding, and can potentially aid the predator in digesting its prey. What do rattlesnakes prey upon? Rattlesnakes often feed mostly on lizards when young and then switch to rodents such as rats and squirrels when they become larger. Snakes are gape limited, meaning they can only eat things that can fit into their mouth. Unlike you and me, they have no hands to help them break apart their food, so they have to swallow their meal whole. As snakes get larger, their heads get bigger, allowing them to feed on larger prey, which can cause a shift in their diet. So again, the primary function of venom in rattlesnakes is for foraging, but it can also be used for defense. Being venomous can discourage some predators from interacting with rattlesnakes. 
to advertise their weaponry and deter predators from a physical altercation, rattlesnakes exhibit a suite of defensive behaviors, such as rattling their tails and coiling with their heads and necks elevated into an S shape, which allows them to lunge further. They also puff up their bodies, which makes them appear larger and more threatening. There are roughly 50 species of rattlesnakes. The exact number increases over time as we gain a better understanding of their diversity. They all live in the New World, including North, Central, and South America, with the largest number of species residing in Mexico and the southwestern part of the United States. Rattlesnakes can be found in a variety of habitats, including desert, forest, and prairie. They are characterized, of course, by the rattle attached to the end of their tail. The rattle is interesting because it is made of modified interlocking scales and the noise is made when the scales rub against each other and not because there are beads or balls rattling around inside of the rattle, which is a common misconception. Tail rattling is one of the fastest vertebrate movements and can be maintained for long periods of time without fatigue because of specialized muscles that are well endowed with blood. Imagine yourself rapidly wiggling your hand for an hour you couldn't do it because your hand would wear out, but a rattlesnake can maintain this behavior for an hour or more, which is truly remarkable. In California, we have nine species of rattlesnake, and there are six species that can be found right here in Southern California. Today, we are going to be talking about two, the Mojave rattlesnake and the speckled rattlesnake. In Southern California, Mojave rattlesnakes are found in the high desert and feed on lizards and rodents. These snakes are well known for their neurotoxic venom, which causes muscle paralysis and is thought to be more toxic than the venom of other species. However, the anti-venom used to treat snake bites in humans is very effective against Mojave venom because the antibodies in the anti-venom are derived in part from the venom of the Mojave rattlesnake. So when treated, bites by the species are no more toxic or deadly to humans. Some people think this species is particularly mean-spirited and aggressive, but this isn't true. Like all rattlesnakes, they simply want to be left alone. And that's exactly what we should do if we encounter one, leave them alone. Another local species is the speckled rattlesnake, which is mostly found in rocky habitats. Speckled rattlesnakes also feed on lizards and rodents and the snake's coloration mimics the surrounding rocks, which makes them camouflaged and less detectable to predators and prey alike because they blend into the background. Different populations of speckled rattlesnakes can be very different in coloration depending on the habitat that they come from and the color of the rocks that are present. Speckled rattlesnakes tend to have a smaller head than other rattlesnake species, perhaps because they occur in rocky areas and poke their heads into narrow crevices. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something new about the basic biology of rattlesnakes. Come join me next week when I talk about the behavior of rattlesnakes in the second video in this series. Charlotte and I will see you then.